Dotted north to south of the Pacific and Indian Ocean is the beautiful subregion of Oceania, known as Polynesia, made up of over 1,000 of the most beautiful and indeed intriguing islands. Some of the most puzzling ruins on Earth can be found here, upon some of the most remote islands of this enormous chain. The most well-known being Rapa Nui, or Easter Island, with its iconic enormous Moai statues, an incredible and extremely remote place, one that was once home to some of the most resilient and luckiest souls on Earth. For to land upon these remote shores, all those years ago, instead of perishing in the deep blue, could be seen as a one-in-a-million chance occurrence. Shipwrecked mariners from all over the world, marooned upon an island littered with enormous, unexplainable ancient statues, once hewn from the solid bedrock and moved across the island using as yet unexplained technologies. And although Eastern Island takes up nearly all of the public spotlight, there is another island, an equally confusing, amazing counterpart. Known as Temahua Tahua, it is located upon the island Nuku Hiva, the largest of the Marquesas Islands within French Polynesia, whose once ancient inhabitants lived within a crater of an ancient volcano upon the island. Temahua Tahua is littered with puzzling statues, possibly as ancient as the Moai, yet they are clearly of a much more peculiar subject. The earliest archaeological evidence of human inhabitation of Temahua Tahua is estimated to be around 2,000 years ago, yet many suspect these statues may be far older. An apparent altar for worship of a reptilian deity. Did the inhabitants of this ancient island once encounter aliens? Who were these statues intended to depict? It is highly intriguing that this extremely peculiar island should be found in a similar location to Easter and although the Moai do appear to be human, we still do not know who or what was capable of shifting such enormous lumps of rock all those years ago. In fact, even with modern technology, we cannot shift such statues without damaging them. Within known human history, Temehua Tahua was the ancestral home of Queen Vakehu, the last queen of the Tahui the ancient people who once lived upon Nuku Hiva. She successfully reunited the two halves of a once divided tribe, subsequently becoming their queen. The Marquesas Islands were settled by Polynesians around 200 BC, and have cultural links with many other Polynesian peoples across the Pacific. Yet the origins of these alien-esque statues remains a perplexing mystery. Are these really the depictions of ancient aliens? And if not, why go to such effort in creating them? Temahea Tahua is undoubtedly an amazing place, one which deserves far more attention. The Great Sphinx is among the Earth's greatest cultural mysteries. In the 1930s, self-styled prophet Edgar Cayce predicted that the secrets of the Sphinx would be revealed sometime in the 1990s, and Cayce, it turns out, may have been right. 10,500 BC, this is when the Sphinx is gazing directly at his own image, the constellation of Leo. And if we are to turn 90 degrees and face due south, we would see the three stars of Orion's belt in a pattern that mimics exactly the pattern of the pyramid on the ground. So we have here a perfect conjunction taking place only and only in 10,500 BC. But history books teach us that in 10,500 BC, our human ancestors were still in a primitive state, incapable of the advanced astronomical and engineering skills necessary to build great monuments. We're suggesting that the entire foundation on which our notion of human history rests is faulty. Ancient Egypt, the land of secrets, the land of kings. There are certain things in life that outweigh all others, burning questions regarding the most important aspects of all of us. To fully understand ourselves, I believe it is imperative that we strive to understand where we came from. 
This quest for the truth is the driving force behind mystery history. The answers to this question, where did we come from, I feel is more valuable than sovereignty, more valuable than wealth and power. Something that should not be concealed for any reason. Egypt is an amazing place, which opens its doors to many of its valuable treasures, however, the most amazing finds, the most amazing objects I have discovered, remain hidden. Hidden in vaults that may still be flooded with the sea waters that swallowed ancient Egypt. Rooms with treasures that if as old as the erosion of their protective sphinx, may be over 12,000 years of age, artifacts which possess great power, the power to rewrite human history. I'm Mark Lehner, and I'm here at the Great Sphinx of Giza on behalf of Dr. Zahi Hawass, helping him out um, on drilling that we're doing underneath the Sphinx. In, in, in our first uh, hole here will be underneath the uh, Sphinx's uh, left paw. Perhaps the most visible example of an advanced civilization in Egyptian prehistory is that the Great Sphinx itself. Although the head was quite obviously recarved in dynastic times, the body and the man-made courtyard in which it sits show signs of heavy water weathering. We think that all the indications suggest that a time capsule was deliberately concealed at Giza in Egypt with the intention that it should be found one day, a time capsule that would abolish all ambiguity over this matter and make it absolutely certain of what had gone before and of what we have forgotten, but a time capsule that was not intended to be found by barbarians, that was hidden away very carefully to be found, as the ancient texts say, by the fully worthy. Perhaps that's who we are. Perhaps that time has come. Perhaps that's the decision and the awe-inspiring prospect that we confront in the near future. The right to open the chamber under the paws of the Sphinx is something of a political game these days. And the Egyptian government is holding all the cards. Only they know when and if the secrets of the Sphinx will be revealed to the world. Expeditions between 1991 and 1993, led by the independent Egyptologist John Anthony West, with Chief Geologist Dr. Robert Schock, Professor of Geology at Boston University, and Chief Seismologist Thomas Dobecki from a highly respected Houston consulting firm, conducted geological and seismic surveys around the Great Sphinx of Egypt. They concluded as follows, the pattern of erosion on the Sphinx indicates that it was carved at the end of the last ice age, when heavy rains fell in the eastern Sahara, more than 12,000 years ago. This contrasts starkly with the orthodox Egyptological dating for the Sphinx of around 4,500 years. The seismic survey indicated the existence of several unexplored tunnels and cavities in the bedrock beneath the Sphinx, including a large rectangular chamber at a depth of some 25 feet beneath the monument's front paws. In 1993, John West and his team were physically expelled from the site by Dr. Zahir Hawais, the Egyptian government's chief inspector of antiquities for the pyramids and Sphinx. He was angered by the suggestion that the Sphinx may be far older than the civilization of Egypt itself. A film created from the data linked the Sphinx to the lost city of Atlantis and suggested that the chamber beneath the pause might contain the legendary Hall of Records of Atlantis. American psychic Edgar Cayce, who died in 1947, prophesied this exact event occurring in the 90s. If his predictions were accurate, then whatever was discovered has been covered up. The Hall of Records is said to be an ancient library, rumored to have been deposited at the time of King Inhotep in Giza, Egypt though, no one knows where. One suggestion has been that it was secreted away under the Great Sphinx of Giza, with a secret entrance to this lair, located near the Sphinx's paws. Dozens of academic researchers and historical commentators have come to similar conclusions, such as Manethu and Plutarch, it houses the knowledge of the pre-dynastic founders and latter Egyptians on papyrus, and allegedly several inscribed gold metal plate scrolls with the partial history of the lost civilization of Atlantis, much as the great library of Alexandria housed Grecian knowledge. The entirety of the ancient Egyptians' knowledge, the builders of the Great Sphinx, the pyramids etc., is said to be held within this place. You have to wonder, what could be contained within these documents that would lead to a huge concealment of this wonder? Does it prove our origins are extraterrestrial? Does it tell of us Terra forming the Earth, while our home planet, died? 
Do these ancient passages contain a vimina? Or an alien craft? Does the library tell of us being visited? Without the world having access to these elusive tunnels beneath the Great Sphinx, all we can do for now is wonder. There are a number of artifacts found at varying parts of the world, which, due to the immense age of the strata they were discovered within, fly in the face of current paradigms in regards to the chronology of man. Iron pots, zinc vases, even imprints of ancient chariot wheels, found in numerous coal seams, and found by people in positions of responsibility, whom often testify not only in regards to their legitimacy, but are often accompanied by the lump of coal in which they were found, still possessing the intriguing imprint upon their surface, undeniably supporting the testimonies of these individuals, all but proving authenticity beyond doubt. Like that of the iron pot and its accompanying coal block, which was its tomb, Carbon dating has indicated that the pot is an astonishing 300 million years old. However, as time goes on and coal mining, along with many other mining activities, becomes more rapid and advanced in nature, it is simply a matter of time before even more mysterious and unexplainable artifacts are also found. Unfortunately, due to the controversial nature of these artifacts, it is very likely that a number of them have either been shrugged off or actively destroyed before ever achieving widespread acclaim. However, fortunately, the next artifact of interest, just like that of the many others we have previously covered, can not only be seen as yet another smoking gun, indicating that there has been a number of advanced phases within human civilization, but yet again, this timeline could, in all possibility, date back an astonishing 300 million years. Although modern society has been taught that we are at the height of human accomplishments, many of these techniques we currently claim as our own accomplishments could have been achieved an unimaginably long time ago, far back within Earth's history. Dated to the same age as that of a number of other artifacts, which we have covered in the past, a group of brass doorknobs were once abandoned, eventually finding their way into a coal seam which has been dated as 300 million year old geology. Found still encased within this ancient strata, these astonishing artifacts are undeniably of an incredible age. Unfortunately, and rather predictably, not much has been done in regard to mainstream investigation into said artifacts and their current location, if indeed still in existence, is unclear. Yet fortunately, before their disappearance, photographic evidence was taken, subsequently allowing us to add it to the volume of research and artifacts which not only support our posit of lost civilization, but place human activities an impressive 300 million years back into Earth's history. Who made these brass doorknobs? Could we really be a civilization hundreds of millions of years old? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. Has ancient alien technology finally been discovered within Russia? According to several talented UFO enthusiasts, along with a number of scientists, that is exactly what has happened. A team from Princeton University in America and the University of Florence in Italy have discovered a quote, quasi-crystal, so named because of its unorthodox arrangement of atoms, found within a meteorite from a remote region of northeastern Russia. This crystal, long thought impossible to be formed naturally due to being too energetically unstable and atomically manipulated. When the team discovered that the meteorite contained this mysterious, ancient, intelligently designed material, they merely moved the goalposts, simply stating that it can indeed be formed naturally. Technically, scientists describe quasi-crystals as quasi-periodic, being manually ordered, no longer found on the periodic table. Although they exhibit a pattern that fills all available mass continuously, they lack what scientists and mathematicians term translational symmetry. Simply put, they are not naturally occurring materials. The meteorite in which it was found is believed to be around 4.5 billion years old. Yet alas, when it picked up this perplexing and possibly alien passenger may remain unknown. UFO enthusiasts and scientists alike 
have previously hypothesized that evidence for alien life would, in all possibility, be found in a form such as this. Pointing out that quasi-crystals, being a novel form of matter, should actually be seen as artifacts of alien artificially created technology. No one has ever been able to explain how quasi-crystals can be formed by natural processes, and no one is ever likely to. It just does not happen. Their forbidden symmetry, making them impossible to be formed naturally. The only other known quasi-crystals, besides those found in the Chukotka meteorites, were only recently synthesized within laboratory conditions by scientists. Being very hard, with low friction characteristics, also a low heat conduction, quasi-crystals are a very useful product, used in a wide range of high-speed technologies, such as the coatings of airplanes and stealth fighters. Two-time Nobel Prize winner Linus Pauling, the idol of the American Chemical Society and one of the most famous scientists in the world, argued till his last days against quasi-periosity in crystals' mere existence. He didn't even believe we would ever manage to create it. Does this sound like a naturally occurring material to you? How did this complex material end up on and within an ancient meteorite? Did this lump of space debris once collide with an alien craft, somewhere out there in deep space? It seems, regardless of what certain scientific bodies would have you presume, that is indeed the most likely scenario. There are a number of unexplained ancient monuments all over our planet, one of the most synonymous of which, undoubtedly, is Stonehenge. Although another, the Great Pyramids, is one we have studied, finding newer casing stones, seemingly conservation efforts by later yet also now lost civilizations. Stonehenge, it would seem, has stood the test of time, not enjoying the privilege of having this later preservation attempt. Yet the resilience of the incredibly hard-wearing stones, which the monument was cut and built from, is an extremely impressive legacy within itself clearly of at least a Neolithic age, yet it has continued to encounter its fair share of vandalism during its long life. Significant amounts of recording damage has been recorded in known history. In the Victorian era, for example, chisels were sold to tourists to chisel chunks of the megaliths away to take home as souvenirs. Now, fortunately, it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Thus, it is illegal to deface or vandalize the site in any way. Yet, interestingly, new theories as to its original purpose continue to grow. One particularly extraordinary theory, being put forward by 62-year-old landscape architect Sarah Eubank, suggests that she believes the Stonehenge we see today represents a mere portion of a remaining ruin, of a single majestic building which once had a spectacular thatched roof temple. Although the theory is interesting in nature, there are countless other theories with incredibly strong, repeatedly provable experimental evidence, strong scientific theory, which corroborates the clock theory. Yet it still exposes the ancients' intimate solar knowledge the creators of the sites clearly possessed. Thus, it would seem, the true purpose of the henge was a solar clock possibly a post-cataclysmic reminder. It is the site we always find highly intriguing. <laughs>